Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, O oh Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, giving a wife and no child, his brother must name the wife and raise up the descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, his wife will that woman be. For seven, for all seven have been married. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and be married, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels. And they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Today in our gospel we have heard, and perhaps most of you heard this many times before, about the Sadducees. So who are the Sadducees who went to Jesus and gave him a tricky question? So the Sadducees was one of the religious parties in the time of Jesus, and they considered themselves to be the only ones who hold the true Jewish faith, because as they believed, they strictly follow only what Moses wrote. And so they take pride in that and that we are the only ones. Because we base it on the book, the rule of Moses. And Moses, in the Torah, was not explicit about the resurrection of the dead. And so they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And other than that, the Sadducees don't believe in the existence of angels and spirits. Angels and spirits are nothing. And then the Sadducees don't believe in the distribution of rewards and punishment after death. Because for them, if it is not literally taught in the scripture, when the, the law of Moses, it is not to be accepted. So no resurrection of the dead, no angels, no spirits, no rewards or punishments. So by the time of Jesus, the Sadducees became the political leaders of Palestine. And they collaborated with their invaders, who are the Romans. And then, because of this collaboration with their invaders, the Sadducees enjoyed a lot of benefits, a lot of perks uh, coming from this collaboration. Um, so they enjoyed all the pleasures that come with wealth and power. It could be thought, maybe if they believe in the resurrection of the dead, in the judgment after death, they probably wouldn't be so quick to compromise with justice and truth just to keep themselves in a higher position in the society. And then it would make us wonder, did the Sadducees start living worldly, pleasure-centered lives because they had lost in the faith or of, on the resurrection? Or they lost the faith, they lose their faith in the resurrection because they started living worthy, pleasure-centered lives. 
It could be because they don't believe in the resurrection. They started living these pleasurable lives. Or because they wanted to live pleasurable lives, they chose not to believe in the resurrection of the dead. It's so easy, no? It's like an easy fate, which is a temptation even now, especially among the sects that, uh, that claim to be Christians. There are those who claim to be Christians and they say, once you are saved, always saved. Whatever you do, after you get baptized, no worry, you're already saved. So that is why, at least in my, in my point of view, at least in my experience in my home country, we have a lot of celebrities who would leave the Catholic Church and convert to these sects because they want to marry again. And to leave, uh, and not to undergo this atonement now. I don't doubt them anymore. Uh, and they just change faith because it's easier. No, not, no rewards, no punishment. Do what you want. It's a temptation. So, with the, with the Sadducees, what happened to them? Well, we don't know. But in heaven, we shall all know. But this gives us an important message that our faith influences our actions, our lives. If we don't live according to what we believe, we will soon believe according to how we live. I hope it's not confusing. If we don't believe, if we don't live according to what we believe, and then you will do all your best to force what you are doing into what you believe. For example, and the use of contraceptives, it is uh, against the law of God because it is a mortal sin. But since the whole let's say, hey, we just want to do it because it's more fun to use contraceptives. And so they will change the way they believe according to the way they believe. So in the end, their Christianity is not the Christianity from Jesus Christ. It is their own version of Christianity. That's why you would think, you know, in some Gospels, in the, some verses in the Gospels, Jesus said, quite wondered, if the Son of God comes back to this earth, will he still find faith? So, if, if we live only according to what we want and not according to the faith, it will make us do anything to survive. And what matters is what happens in this world. Soul will not be immortal. And then every, you have to do everything pleasurable before you die. Anyway, after death, there is no happiness, no rewards, no resurrection of the dead. But if you start dealing with that, you do everything you want. Only this world. But if you live according to this rule of faith, according to your faith, according to the message of Jesus Christ, and then you will be very careful. And then you will have a greater understanding, more or less, of what Jesus demands to each one of us. And what Jesus demands of us is not a burden, but a way to bring us to heaven. So as I was saying, this is a danger for us in the church today because the predominant way of life in our society is not Christian. I would say even in the Western world that how that were Christian civilization, they already forgot about it. I've seen a map uh, of the of percentage, the put colors according to the percentage each countries of the percentage of people who said they still believe in God. You see Europe, Europe brought Christianity to the rest of the world. But let's say Spain. Spain has been very successful in the evangelization of Latin America and the Philippines. 
a successor. But now Spain, the belief in God is only like 20%. Then the former Christian society is gone. And so it makes it difficult for a Christian to live in this situation, in this scenario, because the world will try its best for us not to be like Christians. The church's moral teachings are not at and even violently opposed. And then people who are, uh, how do say, pusillanimous, like they have no courage. Okay, I don't want to be laughed at. Okay, I will not make the sign of the cross in the public because they will laugh at me. Weak faith. So it's always, it makes it difficult to live as Christians. And then, what else? What are the other dangers? If you leave your Christian faith, you will be excluded from the mainstream culture. You will be cancelled. You will be criticized. You will be hated. You will be hated. But with this kind of pressures, in this face, but in the face of these challenges, if we lose courage and compromise to the world, we could end up like the Sadducees, losing the very faith that gives meaning to our lives. If we give in to this pressure of do not don't live like this chance because it's not the fashion. And if you make some if you compromise with that, you will live like Sadducees. Your life will be dictated according to what you want and not according to what God wants you to do. Sometimes it makes me afraid. I, I have this friend, priest from Sri Lanka, who told me the story about a French priest. The, the priest spent all his life in Sri Lanka doing the works of God. And then when he was very old, about 80 years old, a priest comes he wanted to he was asked to retire. So he, he returned to France. After one month, he returned to Sri Lanka and he said, I want to retire Sri Lanka, not to France. And why? Because it's already different. France is already different. It is not the country in which to be. He said, Oh, what could happen to me? That is, if I return to the Philippines, people will be the same. They still have the Catholic faith, or now they have the faith of social media. With all the priests of the social media, I mean, not the Catholic priests, but like those who have the pictures in the social media, who only preach against God, and the faith of only themselves, not in God. So, how can we persevere in following Christ when we are surrounded by such difficulties and oppositions? One of our best weapons would be our faith in the resurrection. What do we mean by the word resurrection? To be alive again, you see? You know, because at, at one point in our life, at, the, at one point, at the end of our lives, we will die for sure. And when we die, what happens? Our soul will be separated from our bodies. What happened to our bodies it will corrupt, it will run in the soil. But our soul is immortal. It will either go to heaven or in hell or stay for a while for the body and then go to heaven. By the way, please pray for the souls for the glory in this moment. And then the resurrection happens if the soul <coughs> returns to the body and be united again with him. And how is it Father is already, is already corrupted, is already decomposed, how it will reunite? It will be, be the miracle of God, of how, how it will happen. And if your soul is in heaven at the resurrection of the dead, it will reunite with the body, and then together with body, will enjoy the blessings of heaven. The eternal joy of heaven. But if the soul is in heaven, at the resurrection of the dead, the soul will return to its body, and together with its body, a new soul united, 
they will suffer in hell. And by the way, those who are in hell are there because they chose to be there. It's not because they have peace, no. But because they committed a mortal sin and they did not repent, so they were there. It's the consequence of their actions. And those who are in purgatory have some temporal punishments to atone And so they have to cleanse themselves first and go to heaven. But anyway, just to expand a little bit about purgatory and more importantly, please pray for your departed, uh, departed loved ones. And if there are any unforgiveness for the dead relatives, please forgive them. Because those unforgiveness, they suffer still in purgatory. There's something. If you don't forgive that loved ones, it will be part of his soul sufferings in purgatory. So forgive. And then if you forgive, it is also for your benefit. It will bring peace to your soul. Two birds in one shot. So keeping in this mind the resurrection of the dead, it must keep, uh, give us the courage to resist the temptations and to stay faithful to Christ no matter the cost. And this resurrection of the dead, keeping this mind the resurrection of the dead, will give us another bigger picture of going to heaven, the, the, the state of perpetual joy and happiness and peace, contemplating the face of God. And then, in heaven, we have our immortal soul, which shall live forever and be with God forever. Only if we persevere in holiness, only if we fight against temptations. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us ask God today this month to help us to persevere in our faith, to help us keep in mind the bigger picture of the resurrection and of heaven. Despite of all the pressures of the world, despite all the temptations, despite all the sufferings, and may we also suffer like those in the first reading. They suffer because they believe in God. If you read the reading, reading is so painful. Seven kids, seven boys tortured in front of their mother, and the mother was watching everything. How painful is that? But they endure because they love God. They believe in the resurrection of the dead. And let us renew this commitment to our faith.